Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve the skin tones and the shadows. Be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, so here's the pencils I'll be using for the underdrawing. Just going to run through this pretty quick because there's loads of uh, videos on my channel that uh, go in more into detail with the underdrawing. But uh, for this, I'm just going to run through it uh, so I can spend more time on doing more real time in this video for the rich colours. So basically, what I'm doing is using the primary colours red, blue, and yellow. With yellow ochre for the yellow, ultramarine blue for the blue and for the red like a warm red and then to create the shadows I'm using the complementary colour which will be in this case olive green and also the dark green for the darker shadows. Just slowing it down to almost real time here just to give you a little bit of an idea of how the underdrawing is done. Basically what I'm doing is using this stage to correct any um, discrepancy with the outline I've done because it's done freehand so I'm moving things around. Now I'm, I'm drawing this on actual pastel mat which is like a sandboard so this is a great way of just to put a bit of pigment down lessen the tooth a little bit but you don't want to put too much in because you need to keep a little bit of tooth there for when you start putting the rich colours in then uh, it, it will still grab to the surface so I've covered it all in red first so when you start putting the white it creates pink then so what you do then is just place the white in the areas you feel it needs to be um, putting more pressure on where it's brighter less pressure where it isn't and then just glazing over with the yellow ochre but I'm not really concerned at this point about detail and whether the colour is correct it's just about getting a little bit of form in there by using the primary colours uh, the red, blue and yellow and also using the complementary colour of red to create the shadow so I'm mixing red and green together to create shadows and if I need to subtle the red just put a bit of green on there and it will desaturate it. Now where the hair meets the skin that is quite a complicated thing to do so what I'm decided to do I'm going to make a video the next video is going to be solely just how I blend the hair into skin, onto the skin tones so that will be the next video so be sure to look out for that now here's a selection of Karen D. Ash pencils I've uh, be using now I'll put a link in the description below uh, giving you the, the actual single pencil numbers I use and also links to where you can buy them from as well when you start putting the Karen D. Ash pencils on you'll notice it'll be a bit grainy so it's just a case of building up layer after layer using the white and then building the colour on top glazing before I can get the correct value of the skin tones as well it's always best to get the darkest areas in first and the lightest areas and then you've got some idea then of what values are in between so that's what I tend to do there just rough that hair in now this second stage I'm doing with the fresher and brighter colours it's still a blocking, it's the details and the subtleties are not put in yet, that'll come later. What I want to try and get is a whole, the whole picture done in those richer colours and then go over at the end and doing of the details which you'll see my later in video do. Just slowing it down a little bit for just to show you how this second stage goes on. I want to put, like I say, do a lot of real time with doing the actual details which will be later on in the 
uh, video. Now for the makeup on the eyes, I'm using this blue, which is like a kingfisher blue. It's got a little bit more yellow in it, so it's a warmer blue rather than this one, which is ultramarine. So I'm using that with a bit of lemon yellow uh, with this uh, warmer blue. And then just basically getting everything into place. Like I say, it's just the next stage. Now the, the colour you see there is a mixture of yellow oak and white, it's a pre-mixed colour from Karen D. Ash, which I tend to use to, to bring that richness out. Um, if you haven't got that just use uh, your white and yellow oak with a bit of lemon yellow, it'll just be the same. It's just a shortcut really, it just saves me mixing it. Uh, if you've got it pre-mixed in a pencil, use it, uh, and then use your, your primaries on top of that. So for the eyelashes here, I tend to use the blue and brown to start with, then go over with the black once I'm happy where things are. If you would like to support my art and would like to see longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please join me on Patreon. Link is in the description below. Here's three Karen D. Ash pencils I tend to like to use just to get that richness and vibrance. Uh, lemon yellow, yellow ochre and a warm red. I'm not pressing on the pencil very much at all, it's just dragging it across the surface and letting the dust of the pastel just apply itself and then just keep building up on layers after layer and skin tends to be like glistening so to get that effect is to use the white underneath and then just come glaze over yellow ochre red and the lemon yellow and it seems to sort of shine through that white. Different areas tend to need different approaches as well. So here I've got pre-mix, yellow ochre and white mix and putting that on and then just glazing over with the warm red. And now for shadows and subtle in the red. So if you put the red down and it's too vibrant, just add a little bit of the complementary colour which is green and it'll desaturate it. These are the pencils I've used for the lips to get that rich and vibrant feel to it. Karen Ash again. All it is is like a, a red and white mix with a bit of lemon yellow in it really. That's why it creates that sort of vibrancy. Uh, it's pre-mixed so I tend to put that in. It just saves uh, time. But you can just achieve that by just using the primaries and a bit of that lemon yellow on top. If you haven't got those pencils just press on a little bit more and get more pigment down. For the deep shadows then, instead of using black, I use dark green and like a cold dark red. Just working through on the highlights and then just keep glazing over the top. So it's just a case of putting the white in, glaze, white, glaze, until you get the desired effect. For the teeth I've used two complementary colours which is blue and orange together which makes lovely greys. If you're enjoying this video why not subscribe, it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos.
For some really dark shadows, I'm using the brown and the purple together. When you've desaturated a colour and you find you've gone too far, you can always bring it back by adding a little bit of lemon yellow. So I'm just speeding things up a little bit now just to cut down on the time because I don't want the video to be too long or to be a bit tedious to watch. If you're getting value from this video, why not give us a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Now the final coat is all about getting that smoothness and the feeling of the skins alive. So to get the texture I'm using the white and moving it in all different directions, very small circles and then just glazing over the top. So it's just a case of going in the direction of where you feel things should go. So you look at the reference image and see the pattern and the movement of each part of the skin. Something to be aware of as well is the energy of the person you're drawing. So how to achieve this in your painting is to actually open the heart, let go of the mind and just send the open heart feeling, the love to the image and you'll be surprised how the energy will shine back at you. Just be in the moment and have no separation from the drawing or painting and the reference image. So allow them to become one by connecting to the both at the same time and just relax and just let it flow through you and out of your hands. And you'll be surprised it will just happen without your interference at all. The more you can let go and the more you can just connect to the feeling and energy of the person by opening the heart things start to really just be automatic when you're doing shadows there's a lot of reflected light from whatever is round the skin tone so obviously this um, dress she's got on is reflecting back onto the skin now it's a case of actually I mean it's like a bluey purpley haze so I, I, later on in this video I start to put that in I'm just building up the actual feeling here by using the dark green that's not black what I'm using there it's dark green and then placing the dark green with the red, mixing it together, will create greys. But it'll be like, um, it has a sort of bluey tinge to it somehow. And it's quite nice. And if you add a little bit more extra blue to it, it creates this purple because it's mixing with the red. And to soften it, I'm tending to use the Carbothello white. The Carbothello white is chalkier so that mixes with the Karen D. Ash pencils and it helps to blend the Karen D. Ash pencils if you like so I tend to put that on the top and then just could glaze over the top again with it so it's just a case of going over with that and repeated the process really this technique does take a while to actually produce the desired results um, you just have to be patient really Now the ear needs to be softened up now, so I'm just basically going over with Carbothello ones and I'm using a dark Karen D. Ash green there, mixing that together 
and that create that subtle shadow or, or the sort of tones of the skin and just basically putting more pigment on but using pencil with pencil to actually blend it. You see I'm not using any blending tools I tend to just use pencil over pencil so just blend it that way or just a dab on the finger that sometimes helps so it's a case of going in there with the white again then glaze over the top uh, similar to other areas and just basically just trying to get that feeling correct Shadows are really fascinating because you've got all these reflected lights on them. So what I tend to do is use a bit of lemon and yellow in the shadow and use a bit of white. And that tends to give it that sort of softness to the shadow. Uh, rather than just going heavy with green and red. Just keep adding that little bit of lemon yellow here and there. And it sort of lifts it in within the shadow if you like. Now it's a good idea to keep looking into a mirror and just to see if you can sense where the values are or even take a photograph on your camera, your phone camera and then you'll see the painting you know, differently it brings out imperfections where you need to work so a good idea at this point just to keep doing that The final details of the face will be added after the hair and the clothes in the background is put in but this is how the stage is at the moment. Is the painting at this stage at the correct angle rather than seeing it in perspective on the easel? So I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Part three of this portrait will be coming out soon. It will be focused on how I blend the hair over the skin tones. So be sure to watch out for that. Take care. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. it, would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much. Take care and be well.